this is Faith of Faith in Books, and I'm going to do uh, Mark Tibble from uh, Book Time with Elvis, his second installment of the Interrail Eurorail book tag. I wasn't tagged, but I did the first one, and I thought I might as well follow up. I saw he had put up the third one, uh, at least I saw it this morning. Um, and so I thought, oh, let me do this, the second one. And I'm having kind of a burnt out day. I'm, I'm kind of bored with my everyday life. And so I feel like I need something fun to think about. And this is a fun tag. Um, so with no further ado, let me get started. I'm going to try and make this much shorter than the first one. So the prompts are part two. Having had your fill of paella, you head off to Lisbon. It is a long route with stops and transfers on the way. Have you read a book that felt like it wasn't ever going to end? Two books I can think of, both books which I enjoyed immensely, but they took a really, really long time. And one was The City of God by Augustine, and the other one was um, Boswell's Life of Johnson, Samuel Johnson, which I listened to on audio. And it took me months and months to listen to that. I listened to it all the way through, though, and I did at times wonder if it was ever going to end, but it did, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I would, I would say those two. Um, finally, after much travel, you arrive in Lisbon, a beautiful city that had large parts of the city destroyed in the great earthquake of 1755. Have you ever experienced an earthquake, tornado, hurricane, or some such force of nature? So when I was uh, young, we had a uh, tornado that came, that touched down right at the intersection of where my house was. And um, I'm in Virginia, we don't have huge tornadoes, but we do get tornadoes. And it sort of pulled down the railing in the upper, I, I grew up in this old house built in 1891 that was a boarding house and it had a, a, an upstairs sort of sleeping porch. That railing was pulled down, some shingles were pulled off. But uh, the really dramatic thing was we had this great big pine tree with a big fork in it. And it was enormous and half of the tree fell down. Um, it was quite scary, it was quite scary. It was quite a, a shocking thing. Um, I remember the color of the sky, it was like a pea green and the rain was, was going horizontally. Like it wasn't even slanting, it was just whirling around and the sound of it, it sounded like trucks or a train coming and the, the roar was so loud. So it was quite um, an exciting event. And then about 10 years ago, uh, we had that earthquake in Virginia, which people who actually live through real earthquakes laugh at us, but it was pretty traumatizing. I remember my daughter had left to drive back to college and she just got out of the rain. She didn't feel it. And she called me or I called her, I can't remember. And I was lying down in bed for some reason. And I thought the dog was leaning against the bed scratching. You know how dogs do that and you'll, you'll, it'll shake the table or whatever and you're, you'll feel this thump, thump, thump. And then I realized, no, the dog's in the backyard. And then I said to her, I think we're having an earthquake. And then all of a sudden I heard all this screaming from the other people in the house and it got really loud. And I jumped out of bed and I started to walk across the bedroom floor and it was moving. It was like trying to walk and something moving. And then it stopped. It was, it was very short. But it did damage some things. Um, and we didn't feel it as badly as some other people that a little bit further south in Virginia. It originated in Virginia. So, yeah. So, and that, I don't know how other people live through earthquakes because that really traumatized me. I kept thinking that we were having earthquakes. Um, and, and like having dreams about it, it really traumatized me. So I'm, I'm obviously a real wimp when it comes to uh, earthquakes. And we also get hurricanes occasionally in this area and usually it just causes um, you know a lot of uh, flooding so all right um, Lisbon was the hometown of Fernando Pessoa. Pessoa have you ever read anything by him no I've never heard of him uh, interestingly Pessoa published just four books in his lifetime and three of them were in English he also translated books like The Scarlet Letter by Hawthorne and poems by Poe into Portuguese. Do you read many translated works and what are some of your favorites? I never think about whether a work is translated or not until after the fact. So I, I, I don't really categorize them automatically like by translated works. So, but I think I do read quite a number. 
of translated works. Like I read Russian, I've been reading Italian, um, Finnish this year, um, like a Finn family Moomin Troll, um, uh, the Brothers Karamazov, um, the, the stories about Peponi and um, Don Cam Camillo from Italy. Um, yeah, I, I read a lot of translated works and I, and I, I don't really think about it much. Uh, let's see, what are your, some of your favorites? I love Don Quixote when I read that. I think I read an abridged version, but I love that one. Um, you know, the Odyssey, the Iliad, these are all great translated works. Um, hmm. I don't know, I've enjoyed many, many uh, translated works. Okay, um, Pessoa was fond of the odd drink or tan. <laughs> you head up to the city of Porto, famous for, among other things, port, a drink of fortified wine. Do you have a favorite tipple now and again? If you do not drink alcohol, then uh, then what is your favorite uh, thirst-quenching beverage? Right now, I'm really into this spindrift. In fact, I might open it because I'm kind of thirsty. Um, because it just has a tiny bit of fruit juice, just enough to sweeten it a little bit. And then it's sparkling water. And so if I'm having a sweet craving and I want something to drink, mm -mm. this is blackberry. I like the blackberry and I like the grapefruit. Um, and then around the house, because this doesn't have gluten, I like this hard cider and it's from Virginia. So I like that it's local. So I, I will have this, but I often share the bottle because I cannot drink very much alcohol. As I've said before, it can trigger migraines. So I just like to sip it and I don't need a whole bottle. I'll just do half and I'll share it with somebody else in the house. Um, when we go out, we, my husband and I usually get, just get a, a glass of Pinot Grigio. That's our favorite and that's what we do. Um, but I'll tell you about the time I actually drank port. A few years ago, we went to Stanton, Virginia, which we're gonna do again in September. We stayed at this bed and breakfast and just as a complimentary thing, they put out, in the evening, they put out port and sherry. And I've been reading about port and sherry forever in these English novels like Dickens and Austen and Georgette Hare and others. They're always mentioning these and I've never had them. So that was really fun to get to sip. I mean, I just took a few sips, but I got to taste port and sherry. So I felt very sophisticated. Okay, Porto is home to the Livaria Lello, a beautiful bookshop that unfortunately, due to a tenuous link to the Harry Potter films, has now become a bit of a tourist attraction. I said I didn't read enough of the, I only read the first two of the Harry Potter books, and I never really watched all the movies. Okay, um, so I don't really know what that means. Um, uh, have you got a favorite bookshop and or library? So I don't really, I mean, I have various used bookstores that I go to or like use book sales but I'm not that consistent I just you know a couple times a year I wind up for some reason going and the only other bookshops I I used to go to Borders but that's like a big commercial thing I don't know if that was my favorite I never could find what I wanted there and Barnes and Noble I like better but if the one that was easier to go to closed and I have to go to a big shopping mall which I do not enjoy doing uh, you have to park way far away and trek um so i don't really have a favorite bookstore there is a little bookstore in the town that i live just outside of but it's very snooty it's very small and it's a wine bar at the same time and <laughs> you go in and it's like all about hillary clinton and ruth bader ginsburg and, and you know it's got a very definite feel to it and I, again i never find anything there that i'm interested in so um you know, not that Hillary Clinton and Ruth Bader and Ginsburg aren't interesting, but like a little bit broader than that. So I don't know, I don't like their selection. So, but my favorite library I think would be the one I grew up going to, which was just down the street from my home. And we, we went there all the time and it was a really good library. And my mother was very involved. She was always recommending books for them to buy. Um, and she kind of built up over the years. I mean, she was she went to that library for like 40 years um, and was very active and, and, you know, let them know what she thought about their selections and that sort of thing. And um, 
I really think she built up that library and it was a really good library. Um, so that's, I have fond memories of that library um, right down the road from my childhood home. So that's my favorite, I'll say. All right, the Douro River runs through Porto and the old town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site with its six bridges across the river. Have you visited any UNESCO sites? If so, tell us about some of them. So I may have visited more than one because I have been to Italy twice and you know I've been to Spain and uh, France and then when I was young, I went to England, Ireland, Scotland. But um, the one that I know for sure was a UNESCO site were the Walls of Avila, which I mentioned in the last video. So they're amazing. Um, it's it's fully intact, so it really looks just like a medieval town. And we went on a tour where we walked completely around the little city of Avila on the walls. Really, really interesting. So I, I appreciated that very much. And I don't know about other ones. Like a long time ago, I went to Stonehenge before they roped it off. Like we were actually able to walk. And this was back when I was 16. Um, yeah, so I'm sure I've been to other sites, but I just don't know if they're actually classified as UNESCO. All right, finding yourself in a particularly devout mood and with a lot of time on your hands, you decide to walk to the, Portu the Portuguese Camino de Santiago, all the way to Santiago de Compostela, which will take you between 10 to 12 days. If you are not up to it, you can grab a bus and be there in three and a half hours. That's amazing, isn't it? It takes 10 to 12 days to go when you could drive there in three and a half hours. Do you enjoy walking, hiking? What is the longest walk you've done? So I, in theory, in my mind, I really like it, but I'm not a very good walker. I remember when I was in high school, we did some sort of fundraiser. I did it with a friend and we had to walk 21 miles. You got people to pledge for you. I forget what the cause was for it was some illness or disease or something and I remember at the end she had to push me like I could not propel myself forward anymore <laughs> she had to push me um and so I think that's the longest that I've ever you know actually acknowledged 10 years ago when we were in Paris we walked around the city all day long my feet were killing me I was suffering from plantar fasciitis at the time and oh my gosh, my feet were killing me. And I was the slowest one. My whole family would be like a block ahead of me. And I'd just be like <laughs> walking. I'm not a good walker, I guess. But I do like to take short walks. That's something that I like to do. Um, but I guess I'm not a all day hiker type person. Okay, after a bit of R&R &R and some intense foot, foot bathing in the Santiago de Compostela, you embark by train to Bilbao. How do you say that? Bilbao? the de facto capital of the Basque country. I read a really good book about the Basque by, oh, what was his name? Mark, somebody or another, it was another Mark. Um, oh, it was really interesting. He also wrote, oh, it's, he's got like a Polish last name. Ooh, I can't remember, but he wrote um, A History of Salt. Yeah, I, I really like him. I wanna read more by him. Anyway. Basque Country was really, his book on the Basque was really, really interesting. The Basque Country was the home to Juan Sebastian El Sano, or Cano, the man who took over Magellan's circumnavigation of the world after his death. Have you read much nonfiction on discovery and exploration? Are there any interesting books you would recommend to us? Well, in the last one, I mentioned um, A Sense of the World about the blind traveler from the 1700s or early 1800s. Um, I remember reading a really interesting book about Ernest Shackleton and his failed attempt at the South Pole, but how he rescued everybody after their ship was crushed in the ice. That was really interesting. And then I was watching Linda Joe, the book lady, and she was talking about she just finished reading uh, The City of Z, and I read that book several years ago, and that's about um, exploration in the Amazon. So that was a very interesting book. I would never go to the Amazon. Too many bugs, too many, too many bugs. I'd rather go on a polar exploration. Um, so yeah, that's all I can think of. Uh, not far from Bilbao, I'm not sure how to say that, lies the town Guernica, made famous by the atrocities committed there during the Spanish Civil War by the Luftwaffe in support of General Franco's fascists. These atrocities are commemorated in Pablo Picasso's painting Guernica. 
Picasso is known for being influ an influential figure in both the Cubist and Surrealist movements. Are you a fan? Have you got a favorite artistic school or movement? I mean, I'm okay with the Cubists and the Surrealists. It's interesting. It's kind of different. Um, not, I, you know, I, I can take it or leave it. Most art, you know, I appreciate it. Um, I think the art that I really, if I had a favorite artistic school, I really kind of like sacred art. Um, I think it's beautiful, um, like icons and stained glass windows, um, frescoes and churches and, and architecture. So I like that. Um, I like beautiful illustrations, like in children's books. Bye. That was a little guy who just said he was going outside. It's so hot and sticky out. I'm just not going out. I got up really early this morning and weeded in the, when it was still cool. Now it's hot and muggy and I'm, I'm not going outside. Um, what was the other thing? I really love illustrations. Children's books have beautiful illustrations. I, I love sacred art. I like uh, kind of folk art or primitive art. I really like that too. But I, I like all art. I like some modern art, some I don't care for. All of it's interesting to me. You know, I like learning about it. Um, people are so creative and, and they have all different angles. Um, so I'm kind of open to, to all of it. But, but those three categories, the illustrations, the folk art and uh, sacred art are all, I'm very fond of, of that. Uh, let's see, um, from uh, Bill Bawa, Bill Bayo, maybe that's how you say it, you travel to Barcelona. In Barcelona, you visit the Camp Nou, home to the Barcelona football team in many, in, in many, hmm, okay, the national team of Catalonia. Are you a football soccer fan? If not, what sports do you like? Do you ever go to matches, meets, events, etc.? So I'm not particularly a sports fan, but uh, I did um, watch a lot of soccer with the uh, Euro Reading Challenge for the Cup, the Euro Cup, um, and that was fun. But I'm not anti-sport. You know, I um, I do enjoy uh, going to an occasional game. Uh, baseball is probably my favorite, and the thing that I've gone to the most games. And in fact, the little guy who just went outside um, is on the Little League team, so I've gone to Little League games recently. Um, the only uh, sport I really don't care for is football. It's, I don't like how injured people get. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't really like that. Probably baseball is my favorite. Um, you decide not to stay too long in Barcelona and instead move on back to France and up the Mediterranean coast to the nice town of Nice passing through the town of Cannes, or Cannes, on the way. Cannes, of course, is well known in the film industry and has one of the industry's most glamorous film festivals. What are a few of your favorite films? What was one of the most disappointing films you have seen? So I really, Mark mentioned um, Alec Guinness in Kind Hearts and Coronets. I really love, what is that, is that Ghibli? No, that's something else. I really like the movies that came out of Britain that the type that Alec Guinness would star in. I, I, in fact, I had a, a crush on Alec Guinness. I've actually read his memoirs. Um, so I like those style of movies. One of my favorites is, uh, which doesn't have Alec Guinness, but it has Wendy Hiller in it, um, was uh, I Know Where I'm Going. I really like that movie a lot. Um, but what other movies do I like? Um, the Princess Bride is one of my favorites of my husband and I went to see that on one of our first dates and it's such a great movie and uh, that's one of my favorites and let's see what else my uh, a really recent favorite is um, Oh Brother Where Art Thou I really like that fantastic Mr. Fox I really like that one um, and so I don't know that's just a smattering um, I like I tend to like oldies I like um the General with um, Buster Keaton. Uh, that that's, that was a good one. Um, yeah, so I like old, as Sean Stanfast and knows a lot about movies and, um, uh, um, you know, and oldies, that uh, the silent movies is what I mean. Um, yeah, he's interesting to watch because he likes those old movies too. Um, but let's see, uh, there was something else. Oh, the, the most, I don't go to a lot of movies because again, they can, can trigger uh, migraines, but um, I really did like 
Oh, he's coming back in. It's 19 minutes already. These are really long tags. You can't shorten them. Um, but anyway, um, I was really disappointed in seeing the, the latest Little Women. I, I really didn't like how the director did things. So that was a disappointment. Heading further up the Mediterranean coast, we arrive in a new country, Italy, and the city of Genoa, where we will pause our journey. Okay, we're at the end for now. And if interest remains in this little tag, we will pick up our trip in the former home of Christopher Columbus. Um, until then, grazie mille e arrivederci. All right, so I will end um, with that. Um, I really wanted to make this much shorter. I guess I just ramble, or I think they're just long. But anyway, um, I hope you're doing well, and happy reading. Bye.